And as we discussed last night, uh, on solemnities during Lent, if they fall on a Friday, by universal church law, you are exempt from having to abstain from meat. In other words, you can eat meat on uh, a Friday in, during Lent that is a solemnity like today is. Now during the day, I know some people were questioning that. Because <laughs> uh, it's a strong custom not to have meat on Fridays. But I say sometimes people <laughs> are more Catholic than the Pope. <laughs> and the Pope says you, you can eat meat this Friday, uh, th today. So it was a sunny day out. I, uh, I hope that uh, you're able to enjoy some of that sunshine and the warm weather and uh, windy, yes, windy. And we have to pray for uh, the Lord keep everybody safe from fires. I know the, the threat, the fire threat is quite high in the state and uh, because of drought. And so be very careful. Watch all the uh, directions that the state or your municipality gives you because it's, it's there for a reason. And, you know, it, it, it just, you have to follow your safety precautions that can save a lot of lives and a lot of money. So follow those things. Um, and we pray for gentle rain for our farmers. And we pray for good weather for calving season that is uh, upon us right now. Uh, and pray that all the calves that are born survive and grow up to be healthy. And so, I really have, a, um, oh, I don't know, empathy, compassion for those who, uh, like they're calving, they're, you know, you gotta get up day and night when that season comes. And then there's this, the, 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 the critical part, you know, making sure the calf survives uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, I can only imagine what that's like. And then, of course, our dairy farmers who, like clockwork, morning and evening, those cows got to get milked. And, you know, people that do that for years and sometimes decades, and uh, my hat goes off to you. That's, that's a lot of work. I don't know if this Irish wouldn't be that good at that. <laughs> But hats off to you. And then to our farmers for a wonderful, well, we pray we get some gentle rains now coming in. And by gentle, I mean soft, uh, gentle, for, but for a period of time, you know, so that soil can get absorbed the rain and it can sink down. And that rain will also help uh, take any frost away that's in the soil, remove that. So I keep praying for all those things because that affects our our. Family life, it affects our economy, affects our communities. And so we pray that all the businesses go well around here. Or, uh, got a lot of businesses around here. The ethanol, Cargill, um, and I know there's a lot of other ones I'm not mentioning them all, but there's a lot. And so I'm gonna pray, and a lot of people that, whose jobs, livelihood depends upon those businesses so we pray they continue to perform well. Okay, Friday, the fourth week of Lent. So Sunday is the fifth week of Lent. And um, like I mentioned, this is the one where the monologue, the Gospel of John of Jesus, you know, now is the hour come, and I talked about that yesterday. But it's, um, it's getting closer, the redemption of the world. Yeah, and can you imagine the uh, tenacity of Jesus? That he's, even though he's son of God, he's also son of man, and he has human nature, he has feelings, he has emotions, he has pain and joy, and he's gotta be getting a little anxious. I mean, he's he's in Jerusalem now, and he's, he knows they're going to find a way to put him to death, and a painful death. And you know, how was he feeling? Obviously, it's something that he felt deeply, and and it wasn't just a walk in the park because he's son of God. No, 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 no. 
That's why he took out our human nature to feel what we feel. That's why he said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. He actually said that. He, he put it in different words. The Bible puts it in the words of, Father, let this cup pass from me. And told the apostles, my soul is terrified and sorrowful to death, knowing what's coming. He was scared to death, terrified, and even asked the Father not to do it. But what's the next line after he said that? But not my will, but yours be done. You say, in a sense, with those words, the world was saved. You know, many, I think of that. Everybody has to give their fiat, they call it, their let it be, their yes. Mary had to say yes to the angel so that she could conceive the word of God in her womb. Let it be done to me according to your word. Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. So how does that affect our lives? I think in many ways we, we struggle back and forth, I think, in life with doing what we think is God's will or not doing what is God's will. Um, and all of us struggle day after day with that very thing. Can, and, you know, we pray that we can more and more be that person who says, let it be done to me, or not my will, but yours be done. It's through obedience and what he suffered that Jesus Christ saved your soul and my soul for all eternity. So, maybe we can walk with him in our fiat every day, or let it be done to me according to your word, every day. So pray for, we pray that your children will come to, to know the Lord personally, the Lord Jesus Christ in their life, in a personal and special way, where they feel they have a journey they're on with Jesus. Your children, all your children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, so on and so forth. Bring them all into prayer. Never stop praying for them. You know, don't. <laughs> You know, some things we say, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Well, don't do that with prayer. Don't say, you better change, or this is the last day I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> you know you're going to do it the next day. <laughs> so just keep doing it. Hey, that's what perseverance does. By perseverance, we will save our own souls. So keep at it. You're doing a good job. And happy solemnity of St. Joseph. Oh, Kevin, by the way, may I... My younger brother, Kevin. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Gosh, he's only a year younger than me. He's 64 now. Mm -hmm. He's only a year younger, retired, although he's working hard with his family. But uh, now in July, he will remind me that I am two years young. Two, he's two years younger than me, and I'm two years older because we're a year and a half apart. So it goes in the saga of life. All right, well, let's begin now with our evening prayer tonight. Or not evening prayer, it's our night prayer. I keep calling it evening, it's night prayer. Oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let me put it up here. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now you'll notice the Psalms tonight are different. These are the Psalms for um, the night prayer of a solemnity or on Sundays. Uh, uh, it's a special... Uh, Special Psalms. So it's not the one about the passion. This is about the protection of the Most High God, about his angels watching over us. Night holds no terror for me, sleeping under God's wings. 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of all, the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God, in whom I trust. It is he who will free you from the snare of the power who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 fall at your right. You it will never approach. His faithfulness is buckler and shield. Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. You who have said, Lord, my refuge, and have made the most high your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the dragon. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him, protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I shall answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. With length of life, I will content him. I shall let him see my saving power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Night holds no terror for me, sleeping under God's wings. A reading from the book of Revelation. They will see the Lord face to face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. It will never be night again, and they will not need lamplight or sunlight, because the Lord God will be shining on them. They will reign forever and ever. Amen. Just like St. Joseph, patron saint of the Universal Church, reigning forever in the kingdom of heaven. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed us, Lord God of truth. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Let us pray. Lord, we beg you to visit this house and banish from it all the deadly power of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell here to keep us in peace. And may your blessing be upon us always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the all-powerful Lord grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. And now we have the other stop up mater tonight where the, uh, the words will be across the bottom of the screen in English.
Here we go. Okay. Well, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday, the Day of Grace. And if I don't see you at St. Patty's Day Parade in downtown Fargo, well, I hope you have a good parade. I don't think I'll make it. Let the mayor know that I, I'm sorry, but... Uh, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I will. I don't know. But happy St. Patrick's Day Parade tomorrow to all of those in the Fargo area. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you tomorrow night, Saturday night, the, the vigil of the fifth Sunday of Lent at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. God bless you.